where I live. I'm a housewife. My name is Ellen Jones. That Tuesday in July starts out just like any other day the past few months. There was no warning it was to be the most terrifying day of my life. I remember thinking how tired I felt. Even the housework seemed dreadful. So meaningless that George can find his bed. No one to see or care even. And then I got sleep. Because I knew I was beginning to feel sorry for myself. George was the one who was ill. And he needed all of my thoughts and attention. And above all, my cheerfulness. I tried not to think about it. About George. How he changed. I told myself it was just my imagination. That things would be different when he was well and strong again. Then I thought I heard him call. Did you call? George, are you all right? Yes, Ellen. You want anything? Not now. I've just begun work on an insurance report for the office. Well, call me, dear, if you need me. Okay. Somehow, I had an odd feeling. There was something about George's voice. I found myself thinking about the first time we met. How different he was in those days. I remember I was sitting in Dr. Graham's office. We were talking. I saved one game of checkers and two games of rummy, and I've written letters to a wife and a mother and a sweetheart, and I listened to a half an hour to the voice of young Anthony. He was awful cute. Now, what else can I do to help boost the morale around here, huh? You go out to dinner with me. <laughs> we get about halfway through the soup, we get a call from the hospital. Mm -hmm. I guess my courting will have to wait till after the hospital. Mm -hmm. The compound fracture down the hall is waiting to see me, but I'll be tied up for a while. Oh. Tell me feeling blue. You see, his wife's expecting a baby in a minute. I think he's going to be cheering up. Sorry, they told me I could find Dr. Graham in here. You want to be along any minute? Why don't you come on in? Thank you. Are you a patient here, sir? In a naval hospital? No, no. I'm just a friend of the doctor. Go in last night with a ferry command. The only thing wrong with me is a double barrel hangover. <laughs> Dr. Graham will be detained, so I'm taking you for an airing. Maybe he doesn't want to go for an airing. He doesn't. Nothing a woman likes better than shoving a man around. I'm Ellen Brown. Doesn't suit you at all. It's much too plain. Well, I'll tell my parents about it, but they're still back in Kansas City. Now what can I do for you, Mr. Jones? I can think of a lot of things. Oh? <laughs> Shall we begin with a game of cards? Uh -huh. Well, I, I could read the newspaper to you. I could write a letter for you. I know. I'm so glad to hear you can tell me all about that wonderful baby you're expecting. Baby, you see. Does Ripley know about this? Uh, which is a bad leg? Well, neither one of them is working very well today. Oh, my head. Did your head bother? Terrible. Both of them. Would you like me to rub it for you? Didn't think of anything nice, though. Now relax. Of course. Now just think of what you're going to do. Pretty soon you'll be going home to your wife. Then you won't have to see me. Think what she looks like. How pretty she is. Lovely. Beautiful blue eyes. Short. 
Lord knows. Soft brown hair. Lovely, kissable lips. Well, there's nothing wrong with your morale, young man. I'll recommend to the doctor that you be sent home to your wife immediately. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. But you're all dressed. Naturally. Well, I'm gone. Hello, Randy. Son of a girl. What are you doing here? Enjoying myself immensely. His leg is broken. No. No, hey, Doc, what kind of nurse do you have around here anyway? I was his own girl. Well, when I came in here, he was lying there all covered up. Let me make an absolute idiot of myself. Very much like Graham. Dear Dr. Graham was going to find himself in exactly the same position for that little boy. We're not going to have him. But that doesn't change the fact that you're wrong about him. He's been wonderful to me. Oh, I'm so much time. Maybe that's because he's a bachelor. The whole life. He's been a good friend to me. You better wait, Ellen. I've written the district attorney asking him to make a complete investigation if anything happens to me today before he can help me. Why do you talk to yourself like this? Why do you imagine things that don't exist? <laughs> I let her exist. It seems you're trying to kill me. But I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> if I can't help you, George, then I'm going to get someone else in who can. Not me that needs help now, Ellen. You gave that letter to the postman yourself just Yes, I gave him the letter, the one that you wrote about insurance policy. I knew you wouldn't recognize a district attorney in any of you, so nobody ever does. Isn't that strange? Everybody knows he's a district attorney, but nobody ever knows his name. You're not going to get there without being another doctor. Because it's all in your mind. My mind is fine. Just to reassure you on that point, let me tell you that letter was about insurance. I told the district attorney how much insurance we had on each other's lives. Either one of us died, the other would do very nicely for the rest of his life. Or her life very comfortably indeed. Oh. I also told them how you and Dr. Graham, how you were working together to aggravate my condition so it wouldn't look like murder. Sure. I also told them how you were gradually giving me overdoses of heart medicine. That isn't true. Anyone would know that isn't true. Why is that bottle almost empty? Huh? They only got it the other day. Well, you told me that you spilled it on the train. You told me that yourself, George. Did you spill the drug in the Oh, this Mr. Phillips will make an excellent witness against you. You'll be the first if anything happens to me. And let me tell you, there'll be others. The letter takes care of everything. The druggist, the medicine, the doctor. He's in it, too. Oh, you've implicated your old friend Graham, you know. Nothing's going to happen to you. I don't know whether you're doing this to bribe me or not, but I'm going downstairs and get that letter back to that postman. I'm not going any place anymore. Because I'm going to kill you. Uh, I did that death happen this morning. <laughs>
just too many things against you, Ellen. Oh, 
Don't you know who Poppy is? No. Say that don't. Don't you have Poppy? What? Don't you have Poppy? No. What, is he mine? Yeah. Look at his eyes. Look at that. See? Poppy's there too. Just like in a real house. Of course, I know him. That's how long Cassidy. Well, save many people today, Hoppy. Oh, you're a hundred. Don't try any tricks now. Oh, I wouldn't think of it. Do you have any cookies? No, I haven't. See, the grocery man hasn't come yet, but I will have later. You know what I do with the bad men? No, what do you do? I dynamite them into little pieces. Shot them, put them in jail. Oh, I don't think the real Hoppy is treating these bad men that way. Well, really what I did was let them tie them up, throw them in jail. That sounds like a lot more work and more dangerous, too. Yeah, take care of you, didn't I? Yeah, you sure did. Can I come in? Well, honey, I- I'm sorry. I'm afraid not. My husband isn't feeling very well today. I won't mess any noise. If I was eating cookies, I couldn't even talk. Uh, no, you couldn't. Well, I'll tell you what you do. After the grocery man comes, that'll be around 12 o'clock, too. You come to the back door very quietly, and I'll have some cookies for you. Okay? Okay. I'll ride my horse up and down to see that no bad thing can make any noise. Because I'm your friend, aren't I? That's right, Hoppy. You're my friend. You weren't in a big encounter. No. Oh, it must be the heat. I could have sworn I saw somebody, right? Took you so long. Took you so long. Yeah, I was talking to Billy. I should say, huh? Well, he's the little boy I told you about the best he's in the neighborhood. The one with the glasses, you know. I can awful sleep in it. What were you talking to Remy Graham about? That's what I'm interested in. We were talking about Judy. If I don't have this letter for him when I go home, he'll be awfully upset. Why, Judy? Well, you see, uh, I'm afraid that he said a lot of very strong things, and he regrets them now. Well, you explain to him that it won't be delivered. It'll be held right here until the form comes back. Yeah, but it's so hard to reason with a person who, who's ill. Well, you know how it is. They uh, exaggerate the importance of everything. What would his heart can be? I wouldn't want to. Really, I, I, I must have the letter for him when I go home now. I, I must. You don't I think I can fix it. I'll let you fill out the form for your husband. <laughs> on one condition. I, of course, must make sure of the contents of the letter. What do you mean? It will be strictly confidential, but of course the letter must be opened and read. Open the letter? Yes, to make sure that it is the letter to the district attorney. No, no, you can't. I won't have anyone prying into my husband's mail. Why? I won't let her back to what you're saying. I know. Well, I was about to tell you, if you let me see, that I would call your husband for you. Explain the situation reasonably and ask his permission for you to open the letter, not me. But you don't seem to understand. No, I don't understand, Joan. And I have no alternative but to send the letter on through to the distributing room.
Peter Jones. I don't want to intrude, but I couldn't help noticing you all day long. I've had the feeling that you... that something was wrong. And I'd so like to be able to help you. Oh, I know we haven't been too neighborly, but trouble's something else again. Can I help you? Is there something I can do for you? Of course, I know you're anxious to get up to your husband. So you run up and see if he's comfortable and settled. And then you come over. Or call me. I'll be waiting for you. She was kind. She might have been my friend. She might have helped me. Then I remembered Ray. He said he was going to stop in again to see George. I couldn't let him do that. He mustn't come to me again. Ever. Dr. Graham Bobbitt. Hello, this is Mrs. Jones. Is Dr. Graham there? Oh, he isn't here, Mrs. Jones. Can you locate him, please, a surgeon? Please do. It's very important that Dr. Graham doesn't come here today. Now, I hope you understand. Of course. I'll do my best. Bye. Bye. And I hit it. I had to. It looked as though he died protecting himself from me. But why did you want me to hit it? That letter says that we planned his death together. 
that you told me to aggravate his condition, giving him overdoses of his heart medicine. And if they come here and find you here, they'll think it's true, just like George said. And his mind was gone. I tried to tell you this morning. He wasn't responsible. They won't believe me. How could they? I did everything wrong. Everything, just like he said I did. The druggist, and then the postman, and then the superintendent, and I even lied to his aunt. They'll all think I was guilty, all of them. You're not guilty, Anna. Remember that. Oh, I, I, I know. The police will be here any minute. Now, you better go. You better go right now. I should feel kind of funny coming here like this. After what happened between you and me, you know. But it's all right. I understand. Uh, here's the letter you gave me in the mail this morning. Surprised I didn't realize it at first. A thick letter like that and only one stamp. Those public officials like the district attorney only accept postage through mail, you know. Yeah, all right. This is uh Pay the postage in these cases, and we have to return to the senders. How do you like that? Not enough postage, and we have to deliver them twice. Yeah. Crazy business. You know, some folks might think I'm stingy. I know these extra stamps cost only just a few cents, but... Yes, I understand. I'm multiplied by you, by everybody else. Yes, I, I understand. Thanks again for the letter, Mr. Tess. Oh, that's all right. Bye. And thanks again, Mr. Tess, oh, for being here. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, he's so funny. I knew that somewhere, somehow, I'd have to begin to live again. But right then, all I could do was pray to lose that one 